What is up, everyone? Train Freak here, and I got a mail call. So, got a package in from Iron Planet Hobbies. Looks like we got a couple of people already starting to pop in, so we'll see who's in the chat before I open up that mail call and let people see what I got. But I plan on working on the layout a little bit, so I'm actually up in the middle of a sawmill right now. So let's see if anyone wants to comment, and so that way we can see who is here. So it's probably going to be a little bit of a slight delay. So if anyone's asking, yes, I have been out in the sun all day long, and I did not use any sunscreen, so I'm a little bit red. Uh, High Plain Strictors here. Nathan DeLay is here. What's going on, guys? Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, all right, so I've got some stuff up here, kind of in the way, kind of not in the way. I've got more stuff laying down. Rusty Possum Bayou's here. What's going on, Rusty? But I uh, kind of felt like, you know, maybe I should kind of work on the layout a little bit. Maybe, you know, do it more or less, you know, hanging out with y'all. I haven't seen you in a very long time. Why would anyone comment and make themselves known in the chat? Says Container Man. So that way I can say hi to you. Because if you want to be a lurker and not be involved in the chat, then that's uh, that's just pitiful on your part. Um, so yeah. That means you're probably just waiting on me to talk about you behind your back. So. Uh, Let's see. Possum Bayou said, I had to mow my yard today. I need to mow my yard, and my mower is broke. Well, the motor runs, but I've got, I think it's a, not the blade, but the spindle. I think I got a, a spindle wrong. You spell bob wire wrong. I thought it was barb, B A R B, because the wire has little barbs in it. Off the rails, Western Australia. Good day to you. Got COVID, so I'm couch bound in need of viewing pleasure, sir. Can I trust you with this task? Absolutely. I'm sorry you got COVID, by the way. Uh, I wish you a speedy, speedy recovery on that because uh, I've had it a couple of times and that is no fun. So absolutely wish you a speedy recovery. So actually what I plan, I plan on working on this gray crossing over here just a little bit. <laughs> You're from the South, you know, good. And well, it's Bob wire. Yeah. Th that's how we say it, but that's not how it's spelled. Rusty. De definitely. I agree with you that it's, it's called Bob wire, even though it's actually spelled B A R B, but absolutely. Got to get a jacket. I'm out in my garage with no heat. Oh, man. Yeah, go get your jacket. Derek Alexander. Hello, freaking everyone. I think it's barbed wire. Yeah, you could be. You could be right on that. I mean, I'm from the South, so we don't spell things right anyways. I mean, so, yeah. So, I'm drinking lots of water. I'll throw that one out. I've got another one here. So, I was waiting to finish that one off. All right, so some of the things I plan on working on with the little gray crossing for the uh, coming into the sawmill is I've got some of these uh, gray crossing signs from TG Train Group. Uh, with this being an industrial, I'm not putting like flashy lights or anything like that. I might attempt to do it for the downtown street crossing for the town of Wiener, but not this. So uh, this comes with two sprues. Each sprue has 10 uh, signs. So that's 20 signs. So that's for 10 gray crossings. It's not bad, right? So Rusty is in his train room watching me in my train room. How about that? So something else I plan on putting in close to the entrance, but not right on that gray crossing is I have a Woodland Scenics uh, just plug uh, light. Not exactly sure where I'm going to put this exactly. Um, 
I have the spot right here, and I know, and I'm, I'll readjust my my angle, so don't worry. But I've got the spot where my lumber pavilion is supposed to go, and I've kind of moved that out of the way for the time being. Um, so that way I can get in here with a vise and a drill, drill bit. Um, because I've got this here, I've already opened it, and actually. It even says it right there. How about that barbed wire fence? So probably I should have did my homework and actually read the actual spelling on the first kit that I bought. So Derek Alexander, you're actually right. Bernard C., how are you, Jason? I'm working in the hangar, so I'm on my phone. Okay. Well, I appreciate you coming in on your phone. Sometimes I watch on my phone. Actually, I'm live streaming from my phone. How about that? uh so you should light up the entrance so those trucks can see where they need to go yeah absolutely i was going to put it close to the gray crossing but not right on top of it so but definitely going to put these signs right on each side of the gray crossing so i figured i could probably start there and figure out what size if my drill bit is plenty big enough, I went and got me a whole brand new bottle of Aileen's Tacky Glue. Um, this is some good stuff. If you can, I get mine at Walmart. Like I said, it's good stuff. <laughs> so that's what I've been using. And of course, I've got some of these uh, sprues, sprue cutters. All right, so that's going to be kind of fun to to cut that like right where it needs cut. Oh, there we go. It ain't too bad. Doesn't look too terrible, right? No, not at all. The problem is, is I don't know how tall I should make this dude. I guess. Yeah, I guess I'm just going to barely put it in. And do it that way. All right, so it doesn't happen often, but once in a while I can pull through. Or a, a can pull through. Okay, that's cool. Uh, so off the rail says, I bought a pile of micro LEDs and a bus board with a step down, but have no idea where I hit it. You know, I always hate trying to find things when I need something, and then when I don't need it, it's right there. Or, like, I'll be looking for it for several months and several months, and I'm like, you know what, the heck with it. I'm going to go buy another one, and then the next day after I go and buy it, bam, there it is. Nothing more annoying than that. So, all right. So, let's... Uh, let me cut out another one of these and then I will readjust the camera and we can start having some fun. And then I'll open this package that I have here from Iron Planet Hobbies. And yes, I did use Pete's code, Hume, in there for uh, my 10% off. Okay. Now we got one sign for each side. How about that? Clutter builders. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Also, I've got my little forklift here. I went ahead and uh, pin washed it. Let me hold the forks. There we go. Looks a little better that I gave it a little, little bit of a of wash onto it. Hey, they make it like that. What is going on with you? How are things in the graffiti world? So for those who don't know, Tim does an excellent job at doing graffiti. I mean, he did me a really, really cool box car and it's sitting on my display shelf. 
So High Plains Drifter saying, I'm back listening as I work on his layout too. So yeah, absolutely. Tonight seems like a good night to work on a layout. Um, especially me because my wife is out with her friend tonight. Um, so ladies night out, right? And so I was like, yeah, I'll work on mine. And plus I've been working all day too, like, like a lot all day today, all outside too. All right, so let's re-angle the phone. Maybe I'm going to be able to see the chat. Maybe I won't. If I don't, we'll find out. All right, that's one of the barbed wire fences. Because I want y'all to be able to see what I'm doing. I got quite a few complaints the last time that I didn't do it soon enough. So this time, I'm going to make sure that y'all get a front row seat. All right, let's see here. So here comes the earthquake. Not too terrible. The only thing in the way is cotton belt trailer. Let's move it. But uh, all right, I'll set it down there. So what I was thinking about was this lamp. You know, I've got the signal here, right? And we got the road curves in that can come in back in a trailer to this dock here. I'm actually going to add on to the dock with the ramp. Um, it's actually a Rick's products kit that I still have that I haven't really messed with. D Rail Terrell, what's going on, buddy? Question Cotton Belt, is that the one that competes with Charmin? No, it's the one that competes with Leather Belt. And, um, I will tell you, when you get your butt whooped with a leather belt, it hurts a whole lot worse than a cotton belt. So, uh, I will tell you that uh, from youth personal experience. Back when corporal punishment was not such a thing. Uh, Crooked River and Eastern. Hi, Jason and chat. Just listening as I lay out more track. It's about time you get to work. So get to work on my design that I did for you. How about that? Maybe you should plug in something in the chat about me doing layout designs and decoder installs and whatnot. All right. So I was thinking about maybe right here on the corner Putting a street lamp either here or do I move it to the other side and angle it this way so that way when the trailer is backed in it kind of lights the dock as well so I don't know. What do y'all think? Do you think I should put it on the left side of the grade crossing, which is where it's currently at? Or do I move it over to the right side of the grade crossing, where it's more of the entrance towards the main sawmill buildings? And I'll give y'all a minute or two to post your opinion in the chat. Hi, Derek. Hi, Plains. They make it like that. Oh. So, Cricket is saying, or Dave is saying hi to everyone. Oh, I'm doing my best, Jason. Hey, that's all you can do is do your best. Left side, dock side. Okay, I'm seeing a left side, dock side from Container Man, who is actually a truck driver. So, I definitely got to uh, take his opinion worth gold on this one. If it didn't involve the trucks, then I'd probably take it like salt. Uh, just kidding. Just kidding, Roy. Just kidding. Oh, man, we got Mystic Railroad in the house. Yo, the long-haired cats on the prowl. What's going on, John? Mystic John? Witchcraft John? Or the uh, witch, witch do John, which is a mix of witchcraft and voodoo. The right because of how it works with the lights on the backdrop. Okay. Well, and, and we are kind of at an angle, so you're kind of at a 45-degree uh, angle just about. So for those coming in, 
Do I lock the left side of the gray crossing, which is where the loading dock is located? Or do I like the right side of the great crossing, which is the, uh, the, the, the more the entrance path coming into the sawmill? Hey, that's a good point, Roy. Oh, Jack Jack's here. All you knuckleheads. What's going on, Jack Jack? We're always bitching. There ain't enough light to see when backing up to the docks at night. Or do y'all think I should grab two and put one on each side? That could be an option. So what do y'all think? Do you think I should have two of them? One on each side? That trailer looks excellent. Thank you. Yeah, it looks like it got caught up in a fire. I've got a whole bunch of those, by the way. Wiring up block detection is a pain. No, it ain't. It's a pain if you don't plan for it, though. But you're also using a different system than what I use, too. So that, that could be part of the reason why, for you, it's a pain. All right, so... Left side... Let me move the trailer out of the way so that way you can see what I'm talking about. I got the gray cross crossing right here. Left side to light the dock. Right side to light the entrance or both. Rusty's saying nothing like realistic truck drivers standing around bitching. Absolutely. Oh, shoot. Did I miss someone coming in? Hey, Tim's here. What's going on? You need to think, could a semi get past it? Oh, yeah. There's there's plenty of room. A semi could definitely get past this. Let me put it that way. That's with the back wheel not even on top of the rail. And there's still quite a bit of space here, but he would actually angle in this way kind of at an angle so probably not a good idea to have a light next to a signal hey that's that's a possibility too but the difference is that signals is directional so you're going to see the signal from a distance this here is not going to be shining directly above the signal it's actually the pole is going to be between the light and the signal mass so Mystic is saying both. Go for broke. Okay, that's a possibility too. Could go for both. And I guess Rusty is talking about truckers just like the shipyard workers. All right, someone said something else. So from experience, if you place that light pole on the right side, you'll get that idiot driver not looking as he's pulling out and clip that light pole with the rear of the trailer. Ah, okay. Okay. So it looks like probably the left is going to be the best bet. I'm assuming everybody wants me to do the left. All right. So we will do the left side and I'm going to bring it over in here. So one of the things I need to do before I put this in, then if I'm going to do the left side is I've got more groundwork I got to do over there. So no light going in today, but that's okay. It will be there for the future. So let's get that out of the way. Then. So y'all just made my job just a tad bit easier tonight. Yeah, the lights of that area are definitely not bright enough to drown out the signal. That's that's true. I am modeling 1958. All right, you could do a bent left pull. Left, yeah. 
a dent light pole. Hey, it's your layout for approach. Oh, geez, here comes the lefties. Well, you know what they say about lefties, right? Because um, I'm left-handed, actually, and I'm always in my right mind. So only the other lefties in here will actually get that. All right, so for those also coming in here, I've got these little Titchy Train Group Railroad Crossing signs. So I've got to put these in as well. So this is going to be fun because it barely goes right under the wire. So I'm going like right under the telephone pole. How about that? Or the utility lines. I can always straighten those out later if I need to. Okay, I think that that should work. Right. Of course, new bottle. Oh shoot, man, that dude flew. Come here. All right. Yeah, Jack Jack fellow knucklehead. Absolutely. So Aileen's tacky glue. Good stuff, y'all. Alright, where did I drill that hole? Right there. So we're gonna put that in facing that way. Andy Dobson, good evening to you. How are you doing? And I'm going to put this sign right here. This time I ain't got to play with those wires. Free sound effects. I've actually seen your setup in person. Have you? Free sound effects. All right. Well, if you have seen my setup in person, why don't you let me know who you are? Three sound effects, okay. So I'm doing better. Back to area with phone signal. Just ask Jack Jack. We tried talking today with me driving north out of Point of the Rocks. Alpine Junction. I'm the oldest pickering. Oh, okay. Oldest picker. I know quite a few pickerings, but I don't know of any. Would that be um, oh, let's see here. John Michael? Would that be it? Am I right? Maybe I'm right. We'll find out. Because I think you came with your grandpa, if I'm not mistaken. Ah, there we go. Oh, how about that? Well, the last time you came and saw it, I've done a lot of work since then. Oh, that's cool.
Well, I hope your family is doing good. Your mom, your dad, and the many siblings that you have. I hope you are all doing great up in northern Arkansas. Derek Alexander saying five commercials already. Yeah, I know, man. YouTube, they just started doing that recently. I don't know what their deal is. Um, they just put commercials in a, in a mid roll makes no sense to me, but it is what it is. That's good to hear. So, um, uh, Roy, you might see commercials and you might not, you might. All right, so now the next part is the barbed wire fence. This is going to be interesting. So I've got like a whole bunch of corner pieces and I think I'm just going to dump this out and then start working on this. All right. So I have seen many barbed wire fences, but I have never um, I don't know, how do you say it? Put one in? I'm not real sure exactly how they're supposed to go. I know I have this piece here that is a corner piece. And it's got the little piece here that goes in the layout. I'm working on the phone watching, which all means we have no dates tonight. Yeah. Yeah, Amanda is out with her friend tonight. So, yeah, I definitely don't have a date tonight. I don't know if that piece is attached to this piece somehow. They don't really give good instructions on these. I was told from a buddy of mine that lives not too far from me. He bought this kit, too. And he said this kit is a pain. In the rear. Yeah, I'm over here knocking stuff down. All right, let's see here. So, one barbed wire fence that's 23.1 inches in length, two gates, eight brace posts, and four corner posts. Okay. Interesting. So I guess when I put these in, like I guess I could just bend it. Maybe glue on a corner piece of it, and I really don't know. Oh, uh, do you? Uh, so Roy, do you have um, what is it, YouTube Premium or something like that? Yeah. And I probably should have studied up on this dude a little bit more than I did. Maybe if I do this side here. Let's 
I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm assuming these things here are what they're calling the gates. This says two gates. So I'm assuming those are gates. Instructions enclosed. Lynn McCurdy, what's going on? All right, let's see what it says here. So you need a 130 second drill bit. Oh, okay, so that's how the gate works. So that's interesting. Okay, and that is how the corner post works. Okay, so this is what they're saying to do. Andy Dobson, if I haven't said hello to you, welcome, Andy. So this is just the basic instructions on installing and how to insert a gate. And then you flip it over. That's how the corner post works. That makes a lot more sense. So. Now, I kind of know what I'm doing. Maybe. We're fixing to find out. I'm having to adjust my step stool. Okay. So, with that being said. I think what I want to do here is do this like so. Yeah, okay. All right, so we're just going to try to wing it and we're going to we're just going to try it out. How about that? So first thing I'm doing is using a 132nd drill bit. To drill out a hole, and we're going to use some Aileen's tacky glue. Hey, Scott Waycross, welcome. And if I missed anyone else, I apologize. So Aileen's tacky glue, and we're just going to drop it right in that little hole right there. Now I'm fixing to figure out where this next one is going to go. Right there. And we're going to drop it with some tacky glue as well. They don't look too terrible. And I think what I can do here is glue this right here in. So, Tim, what I am working on is I have a Woodland Scenics uh, barbed wire fence kit. It's 
kind of hard to see. So do you measure how deep the hole is, Jason? It's got to be two feet, uh, two feet deep. Um, so HO scale two feet deep is how deep, Lynn? Will and Scenix has a video on how to install it. I put one in, put one post at a time so the glue could dry. Okay, NS1903, welcome. I also know how to tighten the chain link once installed using a rake and a come along. Yep, I've seen that done. I have seen that done. Well, the thing is, is this fence is not long enough to go all the way over to the hill back here behind the planer. This is, so this is the planer. And there's a hill with some trees where it kind of hides the trains going through the backdrop to staging. Um, so I know my fence is not long enough, but what I'm hoping to do is do another section of fence this way as well. So I'm just kind of picking, you know, just an area to do because it's supposed to separate the uh, the uh, sawmill from the right away of the railroad. Okay, I'm going to see if I can bring y'all just a little bit closer, but I don't know how well this is going to work. You can kind of see a post right here, another post here, but good luck at seeing the uh, wires. Okay. To model a fallen flag railroad and tracks no longer where it uh, there as it 1970 1980 i want to recapture as well seaboard coastline days in my hometown okay that'd be cool so too short contractor quoting off google <laughs> six days left before the off around the clock event can't wait for it how about that Derek is saying, don't bring us too close. He doesn't want to get cut. It's not razor wire. Jeez. That's right there. And four weeks until the Bat Batavia Batavia train show. Don't know if I said that correct or not. There it goes. That's actually not bad to install at all. The barbs on the barbed wire can still cut you. Yeah. Man, just imagine how small like HO scale, the, the barbs themselves in HO scale are. I still have to come back through here and ballast this track. I haven't done it yet. There we go.
yeah, this here ain't terrible at all. The thing about that Aileen's tacky glue, once it sticks, it is stuck. You need an electric fence at the farm area. Yeah, that, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Dave says that he's installed this fence before. And Tim said my second attempt was correct. I don't even remember what my second attempt was. I know that that that's pitiful. I know, I know. Got some loose pieces of foliage here, but that's okay. Yeah, like I said, I don't know how well y'all can see this. I know me looking at it on my phone, because that's what I'm live streaming with. I can't really see it. All right. Trackside Mike, what's going on, bud? We got TSM in the house. I'm already liking the look of this. Yeah, I don't even make it all the way to the cantilever over here. So I guess it is a good thing that I got some more. So speaking of my package that came in, if y'all haven't already guessed it, Oh, yeah, Ryan, you did a good job wrapping this one up, dude. Throw that stuff down there. All right. So not one, not two, but three more of the barbed wire fence kits from Woodland Scenics. So, so I think I have plenty now, maybe, who knows, because I'm not just going to barbed wire fence the back section, I'm actually going to do the front section too. I want to keep it like the main line is being separated from the, um, the, the, the sawmill, that, that's my goal. All right, TSM is saying I've got 18 people in here with 18 thumbs up. I appreciate that, everyone. So, Dave, as a kid in PA, man, okay, let me go back and see that. Uh, and the cows were eating really short grass, and the grass was real high by the fence. So I pulled out a bunch and offered it to the cows, but they wouldn't take it. Yeah, cows are pretty skittish. I don't know anything for as a prototype railroad put on track plan to design, and I know I can't have everything on a layout or track plan like from way across to Atlanta might be too much for a track plan. Is there a corridor measurement for the fence uh, delineation? Um, no, it actually, I'm not seeing anything on that uh, off the rails. Um, so 
Scott, when it comes when I do my layout designs uh, for people, or you know, even doing um, like adjustments, like I did for uh, Dave. I don't know if he put his uh, code in the chat yet, but um, the the way I do it is I always have my customers fill out a wish list, and the wish list is just basically there to tell me um, what is the most important things that you want, and what are the things that you would like to have but you could do without. And so when when they give me that wish list, it is by uh, you have to, they have to prioritize that wish list. So like the first thing on that wish list has got to be I have to have this absolutely you know no no exceptions I must have it. All right. There are certain industries that fit for Georgia. Oh, absolutely. I mean, logging industry, I know, is big in Georgia. I mean, that's where Georgia Pacific came from. So I don't know if John Michael is still in here or not, but he's a he's like a, a distant cousin to me. He was in here earlier. Um and like Container Man Container Man has seen my layout. I will tell you all this, like what you see in camera does not do justice when you see it with your eyes. I will tell you that for sure. Peanuts, fertilizer, hay, paper, those are all the main ones. There you go. All right, y'all. Y'all better take a look at that. Crooked River in Eastern is, he's got a code because I'm actually sponsoring his channel. Uh, for Crooked Savings, you get 10% off of track plans and decoder installs. So there you have it. And he posted the link up. Right. Actually, yeah, this fence ain't really that bad. I don't know what my buddy was telling me. No, I don't. I haven't seen him in here tonight either. Didn't they build a grain elevator in the fifties, Tim? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's uh, I know the Cotton Belt had several grain elevators in the fifties. Uh, even concrete ones. Dave C R E, look at my last two chats. Okay. Postmodern model words. Howdy. How are you doing? I hope everything is going good in your neck of the woods. Or if you don't live in the woods, then wherever you're at. Well, this was like I don't want to drill. If I didn't find like a screw or something, that would stink. Yeah, 
it went down that time. So I was growing in 1970s railroad seaboard coastline, had pulpwood cars and no something and pulpwood cars and no longer around to see pictures of pulpwood sidetracked with dirt all around with lots of pulpwood ground. So Scott, what I would recommend you do is look up some of the Seaboard Coastline historical websites. Um, before it was Seaboard Coastline, you might look and see if it was either the Seaboard or if it was the Atlantic Coastline, because that was where the, you know, the, the SCL came into play. It's a merger between the Seaboard Airline and the Atlantic Coastline. And just kind of see you know what what that route was like that's what i would recommend do all right tim have a good night bud i hope you have the rest of a great weekend into the work week on monday so take care my friend we will see you next time This one just needs glue. Like so and stuck in the hole. All right, let's see who else is here. I'm in the woods at heart, Jason. Absolutely. Okay. Man, so the the hard thing is, is when y'all when y'all type little books, it makes it hard to see <laughs> what's all happening. So I'm having to scroll back and forth. So Lynn McCurdy saying, when I was working for the fence company, we were drilling for posts in a concrete wall on top of a building and drilled into rebar. That wasn't great. Oh, I bet. I bet that was not fun. Well, I've only got three more posts on this fence here. Three. That's all I've got left. Not exactly sure how I am going to continue the look to make it look like one solid fence. Not real sure how I'm going to do that. So, Dave, I'm going to ask you to stop laying track for a second and explain to me how did you connect multiple fences together to make it look like one fence? Or did you put in one of these little, these little uh, gates? You know, well, one of those. All right, and then I will wait for his response. Oh, I still drill holes. First loco Derek Alexander ever bought was a SCL because he loved the black and yellow. A CSX line from Atlanta to Waycross was the ACL before it was the C or the SCL merger. Sean Powell, how's it going? From Laurel, Delaware. So actually, speaking of the Atlantic coastline, I actually have a pretty neat story that um, ties my railroad with 
the ACL. And that was the ACL ordered um, a whole bunch of Baldwin VO 1000s. And Baldwin had it painted in the ACL paint scheme. And could not pay for it for some odd reason or another. And so Baldwin discounted it to the cotton belt. Oh, I just tapped my wires. And so the first batch of cotton belt Baldwin VO1000s were actually in the ACL purple and silver. So interesting story. Anthony Borden, who created your backdrop, senior? Or, sir, it looks great. So, um, my friend uh, William uh, Prusso, he is known as the train junkie, is the one who created the backdrop. All right, so I'm kind of going back in the chat. So, Sean, doing good, recovering from reconstructed back surgery I had done two weeks ago. I wish you a speedy recovery, my friend. Yeah, that's no no joke, Tim. Um, I will tell you this. I don't hardly make anything off of YouTube. The most, the most money I make is actually from either uh, channel memberships or uh, super chats and super stickers. The, the ad revenue for our niche, it's, it's junk. So, but I mean, it, it all adds up. So I'm not. Fully complaining. <laughs> I must be doing better than I thought. I just got an ad for the local Maserati dealer and I have to hurry in now. Yeah, Tim, you're, you're right about that. I hardly ever post anything, but I will tell you this, Tim, um, even though I'm not posting, I've got some videos um, out there, especially my JMRI Operations Pro series and the video that I did last year about why I like soundtracks over the other manufacturers. And that's not saying the other manufacturers are terrible because they make good products too. It's why I prefer this manufacturer over the other ones. Those videos are getting lots of views every single day every single day every single day so when you have videos like that you don't have to post as on to keep up with the views oh right the waffle house fund i will take it thank you possum by you you know what i need to do for you hold on a second i'm gonna fix you right up hold up All right, coming back in. All right, so I might not be able to put the word super on the screen, but we're going to get you a horn. How about that? All right. All right, just for Rusty. There we go. Thank you, Rusty, for the $5 super chat. Oh, Jack Jack's getting in on the action, too. Thank you, Jack Jack, for your super chat as well. So, Anthony, the size of my layout, it's still in construction. It's about maybe the bench works, maybe 40 percent built. Um, it is in a 20 by 20 or 20 foot by 20 foot garage that I actually enclosed. So we took the garage door completely out. The uh, other exterior wall, we ripped all the sheetrock off. We insulated it and basically, you know, just walled off everything. We finished the outside of it, made it look really professional. 
if you go and look at my um, videos number three and four in the Delta Pines playlist, you'll actually see the work that we did to create this room. Um, but it's in a 20 by 20 room. It's got a spiral size layout. The videos one and two in that series actually shows what the bench work is supposed to look like um, or what the bench work actually looks like. The track plan has been adjusted a little bit here and there uh, since I did come out with those videos. Now that I turn the layout on, we're going to get a whole bunch of racket from all the locomotives sitting in staging. Um, but uh, the layout, as it goes around, it's a chef style layout. The uh, bench works only 24 inches deep, so two feet. Um, the bottom level has not been built, and the helix that goes from the bottom to the top level has not been built. So I'm focusing on doing everything on the top first, and as I get areas scenic, all the electronics and stuff, um, then I will start working underneath. All right, so we got one from Derail Daryl. He wants on the action as well. All right. There, I'll give you all a headlight too. How about that? So thanks, guys. I greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, that helps the channel a very long ways. Um, it's going to go towards... Um, Contest prizes and also materials towards the layout. Do I have to worry about the temperature for the rails? Actually, no, I don't because I installed a HVAC unit uh, that also has a heat pump. So um, I keep it a constant anywhere from 68 to 72 degrees in here at all times. So it, it's on auto. So when I'm in here, I'll drop it down to 68 because I'm pretty hot natured. Um, but when I'm not in here, I typically keep it around 72. So, no, I don't have to worry about expansion and contraction. All right. I've got two more of these things to install, and then I'm going to put a gate in afterwards. And that'll actually be pretty good because the gate's going to kind of hide hide it. So thanks, Dave, uh, for telling me about the gate. And leave it to Lynn to always want to be flashed by the headlight of a locomotive. All right. But yeah, this is actually a whole lot easier than what I thought. So when my buddy Marcus, if he ever shows up tonight, I know it's Saturday night, so he's probably out partying, which would not surprise me. So how much does YouTube take from a super chat? They keep 30%. So, for example, those two $10 super chats, I only get $7 each out of those. And the same thing with channel memberships. They keep 30%. And I thought I saw my buddy John Arthur pop in here too. What's going on, John? All right, let's see if that holds deep. No, it is not. So this was also an area where I did some plaster work in the past when I had Gamer and Thrones. In this area of the layout. Now here's the crazy thing guys. Oh you can see the post up pretty well now. Uh, from about here on back. All of the tacky glue, it's completely dry. So, like, I'm not even seeing any white residue around the post. This is actual real dirt out of my yard. And you seal it in with just, like, Mod Podge, like a Mod Podge water mixture. 
But no, this is actual real dirt. No grout. Um, you just have to kind of go in and cook it in the oven at 450 degrees for about an hour to kill off the uh, impurities. And then you just lay it on and and get it really, really wet. I got to come up and do some touch up with some of the the dirt, though, but I've got quite a bit made. I don't know, it just feels like this piece of plywood here, because there's a seam right here. Feels like this one here is just a little harder to drill into. Yeah, this fence ain't bad at all. There we go. All right, last post. And then we'll put in a, a gate. I don't know if I got enough on that one. There we go. All right. I'm going to go. Hey, Kyle Stevens is here. Yeah, no joke. Me and Aaron enjoying some Waffle House in the morning. Let me get you fixed up here. Thank you, Crooked Day, for the super chat, man. I greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Yeah, Waffle House does sound good in the morning. That's no joke. All right, I'm going to go back and look at some of the comments. John Arthur, nice looking scene at my last NMRA division meet. There was a clinic on chain link fencing. Makes me realize how much these fences add realism. Absolutely. And I decided to go with the barbed wire fence in this instant because I thought chain link would have just been too modern for kind of a more rural area. All right. So, yeah, barbed, yeah, barbed wire fence, not bob wire. Yeah, but Tim, down in the south, man, with our with our southern draw accent, we say barbed wire, but it sounds like bob wire. Wouldn't it be easier to go the invisible fence way? Yeah, it would be, but Okay, watch the video of a man that takes HO scale DC locomotive rebuilt and talking about how made money ties to over 4,000 on his videos. It, it just depends on how many views you're getting, Scott, um, based on, you know, how much money you're making. But, you know, I'm going to be honest with you as a channel that's got a little more than 1,800 subs. Um, I don't make Harley Jack diddly squat when it comes to money, especially off of ad revenue. So. Okay, folks, have a great night. Got to hit the. All right, TSM, have a good night, my friend. I hope you have a great weekend as well. So Mike is out. Billy Bob Wire. There we go, Rusty. Mike, tell her that you saw on YouTube that doing that keeps the oven cleaner. Yeah. All right, I caught back up in the chat. All right, I'm just goofing around when I say Bob Wire. Kyle is in Alabama and from West Virginia. He gets the job. Absolutely. Yeah, they both start with B. Absolutely. 
I mean, I could have put razor wire in. That would be interesting. And then it'll look like a border. You know, a border border patrol fence. Or a prison fence. One of the two. Yeah, this, this doesn't look too bad at all. Especially now that I've got, you can see a little bit more color contrast. Uh, let me see if I can pull this this way. And right here you can see there's an angle bracket uh, for the end piece there. Well, it ain't a prison. Okay, so Anthony, I use LCC. And so it stands for Layout Command Control. It does not replace DCC. So think of DCC for your trains and LCC for your layout. And that is what I'm using. With razor wire, you might cut your fingers installing it. At, well, I'm, I'm over here cutting my fingers and my arm installing this barbed wire, too. All right. Now the fun part. i got to put in a gate. Uh, no. I'm actually using a product. This is the Woodland Scenics Barb Wire Fence. So. Here is what it comes with. So that way you can see. One barbed wire fence that is 23.1 inches in length. I guess they just couldn't make it 23 inches even. Uh, two gates, eight brace posts, four corner posts. Yes, this right here is a VO1000. It is a Stewart Hobbies that I have installed a Soundtrack Tsunami 2 in it. Yeah, don't you don't need razor wire if you do a max security prison, just a massive wall. Absolutely. I hate all this wiring. I'm only dropping eight blocks for now. Well, that's a start, Jack Jack. No, I've actually got to redo some of the electrical wiring on the bottom of the layout, especially where electrical components are located, because if I have to replace something, um, that's going to be a booger bear to try to climb in a, you know, a uh, between levels. So I got to find a way to bring some stuff up. The AI must have heard you, Jason. <laughs> I just got Papa John's delivered in the middle of your stream. Yeah. Guys, I don't know what is up with YouTube now putting ads in the middle of the streams now. Like, I can understand why they're doing it for videos, but I really don't understand for the streams. So, yeah. Uh, it, it behooves me a little bit. I think I'm going to take that one out. And I want to pop another hole right beside it. I wonder if my drill bit is starting to get dull. That could be part of my problem. It just feels like it don't want to cut. All right. Oh, you're welcome, John. And so, I'll go ahead and share the instructions again. So, you need a 132nd drill bit, some type of glue. In this case, I'm using Aileen's Tacky Glue. If you plan on adding a gate in the middle, that's what they're talking about here on the bottom section. So, that way you can just easily add a gate. 
for your corner post and stuff. That's how you would do that. So yeah, not too terrible. Okay. Now I gotta drill in this one other hole here. Figure out where this is gonna go, right? Right smack there. Actually kind of odd working around this here building. All right, let's see if I got my hole deep enough. Nope. Yeah, earlier this drill bit was doing really good. Oh, Lynn McCurdy. Let's get you fixed up, buddy. Here you go. Thanks. Thank you so much for the $10 super chat to help for band-aids on all of my cuts. I greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Man, it's still not deep enough. There we go. I felt it go down that time. Yeah, you're in like Flynn this time. All right. Okay. What I probably need to do is go ahead and drill the hole for the next one. It's going to be kind of right beside it. That way it'll already be there. Whoa. Guess I put too much pressure. Rusty over there making dirty jokes again. I saw something about that's what she said. Oh yeah, you get that nice ten ninety nine. So you get, yep, you got to pay your taxes. That is no joke. You know the government wants their cut too. Okay, that hole should be deep enough now. Randall Ellison, what's going on, man? All right. Well, good news is I've got one fence done. So that's the good news. 
So yeah, in reality, you get 35 cents on the dollar. That is no joke. No joke at all. All right. Yeah, fence don't look too terrible. I'm actually kind of impressed. But any expense your channel can rot off. Tim, I don't think so. But I could be wrong. Could be. Definitely not right. But yeah, I really don't think there's any expense that could be rid off. So the fence looks fantastic. Thanks, John. I greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. I am going to hang on to these pieces because I never know when I'm going to need them again. But before I start installing the next section, um, I just see where I've got some some flocking and stuff I got to do back there. And before I do that, I need to add some more paint. But let's see here. Something that I probably could do. Let's see. I've been live for, what, about an hour and a half now just about? Uh, let's see here. I can show you something that Amanda went and picked up for me. I've already taken it out of the package. I don't know exactly where on the lap I'm going to put it. So. Ah. Well, I forgot it's still, it's still plugged in. So. Let's see how far I can put over. Not very far. Okay. So I'm going to have to re-angle the camera because I still have it plugged in. I was just messing with it. But check check that out. It's a lighted billboard. It's uh, from Woodland Scenics. So you can see where it's, actually, it's still lit. So uh, probably it might end up putting this over in the town of Wiener, maybe somewhere else. Not real sure where this is going to go just yet. But uh, I think it's pretty cool. So, yeah. And they even detail the backside that you're not going to see. So, you get like all the conduit and stuff. So, I thought that was pretty cool. So, yeah, Amanda, Amanda picked that up for me. It's pretty neat for sure. Okay. All right, so what we've done so far today is we've added the railroad crossing signs. We've added the barbed wire fence. And we decided that instead of putting a light pole over here, we're going to put one over here. Or I could put one right here instead of it being over here maybe move it over here so it kind of lights the entrance way in and then of course this is where the uh, this building goes make sure i get it in the right spot so yeah so that's where that building will go So I theoretically could put it, stop, put a light like right here.
I don't know. What do y'all think? Y'all think I should put a light, put a light pole right here on the by the corner of the building, which is also kind of lighting, you know, the drive coming in and out. And then I also have another light on the other side where the dock is. I mean, you kind of want your areas lit pretty well. So. All right, Lynn is saying do it. Derek is saying yes, light on the right. Um, mount a light on the building. Yeah, I'm not about to do that. Not on this one. Well, I thought you were not a scenery guy. Looks great. Love that scene. Thanks, Dave. I greatly appreciate it. I'm not saying I'm not a scenery guy. Just scenery is not my forte. Electronics is. And I've had a lot of help along the way. All right. So am I going to do it? Because I've got the drill bit right here. Off, off the rails is saying on the left. I don't know. I'm kind of thinking maybe do both. Maybe I should do both. John is saying do it. setting i know it looks that way but you know you got the planer here right like you're not even seeing the big sawmill building because i'm actually in the spot where it's actually partially at so this is supposed to be for all the finished wood so now this building does have a light right here so this side is lit up but i don't have the main entrance way lit. Holy repeat Batman. Just do it. Not a pole off the backstop. Yeah, I just, I don't know, Jack Jack. I'm thinking about not putting any electrical lighting on this building at all. What the heck happened to the audio? Uh oh, did the audio go out? All right, let me know if you can hear me loud and clear. Jason moved into a 10 can. Okay. Oh, let's go to six. All right, can you all hear me now? Fixed. Sound good now. Okay. All right. So I had to go in and change something. Gotta love it. All right. Well, maybe I wanted to go to space, Rusty. Okay. There it is. All right. So like I was saying, the, the main sawmill building, it's actually elsewhere in the train room right now because this hole that I'm standing in is actually going to be filled in and so we have the boiler house here which actually has a light on it the planer has a light on this side and a light on this side and then this is the lumber shed for all of the you know finished lumber um, I do have my one of my forklifts right here. So I just can't find someone that I can glue on him that looks like a worker. So I know with the sweeping curb, but the whole thing about the sweeping curb is 
the illusion of it is to hide the fact that this train is coming out of this removable backdrop. So that that's the key. I want it to look like the train is coming from nowhere. All right, so I'm getting a lot of suggestions that I should just go ahead and drill this dude in. So we're about to do it. Let me get the phone readjusted. So if you thought it sounded funny a second ago, I'm going to make sure i got something. What is that mounted right there? Okay. We're going to have to move it over. I've got something mounted right up under it. Uh, let, me, let me take a look. What I thought... Okay. If I go here, I will be fine and I'll clear it. There we go. Holy smokes, Batman, the hole has been driven. All right, now you get to hear the other machine. Nice little handy tool. This is a Bissell. It's rechargeable. And you can collect everything in this little thing here. So really good to use for modeling purposes. And it uses a mini USB. I think I got that thing at Walmart for like 80 bucks, I think. The gray and blue reminds me of the York Peppermint Patties. Okay. So check this out, Cotton Belt Route, the Blue Streak was known as America's fastest freight train. And it didn't have to do with speed. It had to do how good they routed traffic along a single main that only had passing sidings. There is a book out there called The Blue Street Merchandise. Um, I'll go grab it in a minute and show it to you. It's a really, really interesting read. All right. If you don't want to act right, we'll do this. Okay. And then to seal it in, did you dial before you dig? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I went and checked. If I would have went any closer to the building, I would have hit something. All right. There we go. I don't know. What do y'all think? I think it'll look better once I get it plugged in. All right. Now I accidentally bumped all of these wires. So, so the downside about using sewing thread for telephone lines is they do like to stick to each other. But to fix that, you can just take like a toothpick and just kind of run in between them. And it will break them up for the most part. And I'm just kind of looking to see where I've got some that are attached.
What in the world? Here we go. And then you start getting cross-eyed. Maybe I got one more I gotta straighten out. There we go. Alright, got that fixed. Now you need a little shed and some junk under that light. <laughs> yeah. And no work permit either. Absolutely. Well, they didn't do that back in the day. Greet that pole is the same size as the one on the other side of the tracks. So, yes, this one and this one back here are the exact same poles. Um, it comes in a kit, uh, Woodland Scenics makes, and let me, let me grab the kit real quick. I have it just right down here. Okay. Some new comments. So it's the uh, Woodland Scenic Street Lights wooden pole, but it also comes with these little extensions. So, like if you're in like a, a railroad yard, you can actually run your wire through one of the extensions and make your your pole just a little bit taller. It's good for like rail yards. And stuff if you wanted to lot those but they come with uh, one of these things with the uh, pressure connectors with a you know the just plug and the pretend wire tips so just pop that in there like so grab this one same thing you can use a number four screw and, um, you know, screw it up under. And then your wires that go to your light just pop in there and you're good to go. Right. Okay, y'all been busy week at work. Only going to catch busier. Catch y'all later. Keep up the great work, Jason. Thanks, Kyle. I appreciate it. You have a good night, my friend, and I hope you have a great week. So I have one. Or finish. I got one left in the first package. I have a second pack and a third pack. So I've got plenty of these. And I'm probably not going to use them all in this area. Uh, one of the things that I am looking at getting is um, Logic Rail has one of these that will do um, 16 different lights that are just plug quick connect so i'm looking at getting that and maybe replacing the just plug lighting system altogether but still using some of the woodland scenics products because i do like their products that they do make they they make really good products all right. So I'm thinking for the day, I think I'm pretty much done with this scene. Um, really, the only thing I need to do is I need to paint some more of the ties on the turnout back here. And then, you know, ballast. I've got it ballasted where the locomotive is sitting is ballasted. So basically, it's just the turnout to the gray crossing I need to to ballast. So on a 12 volt supply, you can add a ton of LEDs, like more than you would ever install on a layout. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure on that one. But the cool thing about the logic rail with the um, um, with the LCC is, if I wanted to, I could make this one here flicker 
like the light is going in and out. So that that's something that I'm really looking forward to doing. And with it being on LCC, you can add what's called a fast clock uh, on your LCC system. And it will actually turn on all the lighting features at a specific time on your fast clock. The only thing I just don't know what I would be able to do is the brightness of the deck lighting. I would have to kind of dim it down manually, but eh, it is what it is. So, so yeah, not not too terrible. Um, I think this is a scene that's really, really come together, um, looking pretty good. Uh, made a lot of progress with it. Um, kind of redesigned the uh, community barn. I took the cars in the front off and parked them all off to the side. I took the Volkswagen bus off because it doesn't meet the age. It's a little too modern. I've got another lighted vehicle down there that I want to re-angle. So it looks like they're trying to come towards the community barn and I don't know where they're going to they're going to have to find a place to park um, but yeah I think this is a pretty cool scene here I think what I'm going to do on the front side of the sawmill as well is add another gray crossing but over towards the edge of the layout as well so it looks like the sawmill has uh, multiple entrances in but I'm really impressed on how that fence turned out uh, when I get the lumber loads finished, um, I haven't worked on them much. Then I'll get those up under here and uh, get this building here sealed in. The planer is sealed. It's sealed in for sure. So I still got to do scenery. I still got to do scenery all up in here. And then that's just making that progress on moving out. So you can only do so much at a time, right? And then I know I'll have to, I've got the Woodland, not Woodland, a Walders piping kit. So that way I can run a pipe from the, the collector here over to the TP barn, which is this building here. So. I have an idea for this, but I just don't know if I want to chance it or not. And that's basically cutting out all of this and putting actual mesh in it. And thinking about maybe putting in a smoke unit in here, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Alright, so let's... Let's do this. Now you get to look at my ugly mug again. How about that, right? Yeah. So I think I'm done for the night. I don't really think there's anything else I can do. So um, so why don't we do this? Everybody in the chat, why don't you put in your subscriber rate, um, your, your subscription numbers, and if you've got like an upcoming video coming out to let other people in the chat know, um, you know, hey, you know, what you're doing and whatnot, you know, just kind of shout yourself out right now, if you don't mind. You know, I like to try to support everybody in the community. And, you know, that's that's the best way we can all grow is by supporting each other. So why don't y'all go ahead and do that? Yeah, subrate your subscription counts. So maybe rate's not the right word, but post your subscriptions. So Lynn, if you've only got two people, put down that you got two people. Even though I know you got more than two people. Thanks, postmodern. I really, really appreciate that. Let's see if anybody's going to post their numbers. The last I checked, I was like 18, 20 something. So I have no clue where I'm at now. I, I don't check every day. 
Good stream, Jason. So John Arthur's at 2334. Just uploaded a video for the first time in three or four months. I have been missing your updates. Showing and installing a new industry run a train next month, which will get me up to 575 videos. That's a lot. That is a lot of videos. So Rusty is saying, I plan on a video release tomorrow on my T-Track module series. I will be looking forward to that. And he is at 215 subs. So we need to try to get Rusty up there a little bit more if we can. So if you're watching this for the first time or you've been following me for a while, go give Possum Bayou some love. All right, Tim is saying that he's got 350 subscribers. Not sure when my next video will be. I know I'm getting a new locomotive next month, and there will be a train show haul video next month, which will get me up to 575 videos. That's awesome, Tim. Crooked River 2590 just put a video out today. I hope to have another one in a day or two with my inaugural run on the upper level. So is your inaugural run going to be one train running, or are you going to have two trains running? That's what I want to see. Randall says, I don't know the exact number of subs. I just know it's over 700. Lynn McCurdy, 467 as of tonight. 442 videos. All right, so those who are not at 1,000, y'all should really go check those channels out. Okay, Randall just looked. 718 subs. Off the rails, Western Australia saying, Awesome, Jason. Going to leave it here. Need to get some fresh air. Then try to sleep off the sick. I do hope you get to feeling better. Uh, subscribers heading to 258 something. Looking at work in the grain elevator soon. Awesome. Well, like I said, um, I'm sorry that you caught, caught the showstopper. I hope. You get to feeling better very soon. And Postmodern says, I think I follow everyone here already. Well, I know everyone in here I follow too. <laughs> yeah, I do have a grain elevator that I am going to work on. Riceland is actually going to get a new home. It's actually going to be moved to an area of the layout that's not even built. So... Hey, Sparky 107, 107, welcome. So, thought a scrapyard fence was hard, but don't think I'm trying that barbed wire thing. It's actually not as hard as uh, I thought it was going to be. I was told it was pretty hard, but it's actually pretty easy. So, John is saying that um, they just caught the showstopper as well. We just got out of the showstopper, hit everyone in the house pretty tame compared to the first infection. Yeah. I, I've had it twice, and the second time it wasn't near as bad as the first. Um, I never lost my sense of smell or taste, but Amanda did. And the funniest story on that was uh, with her, when she lost her sense of smell. We were walking through, I can't remember if it was Lowe's or Home Depot, but one of the hardware stores. And we walked right past a guy who had a whole bunch of the, uh, I call it chipboard, but it's like plywood made of wood chips, pressed and glued together. And um, she goes, oh, that smells like chocolate chip cookies. And I'm like, no, hon, that is formaldehyde. So, yeah, she thought formaldehyde glue was chocolate chip cookies. That's how bad it messed her up. So I try and put uh, out two videos a week, one every Friday afternoon, and one random drop. <laughs> John's saying, my wife probably wouldn't mind losing her smile sleeping next to me. <laughs> that's, that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, my wife probably the same way. It'll just be the putter main I need 
more truck to get the inner main installed. Okay, the outer main. Footer, what, what's a footer main? The outer main. Okay. So Dave's got typos going on. Well, Dave, I'm, I'm still looking forward to it either way it goes and getting your uh, transition from the bottom to the top in, too. That's going to be really nice. You know, as you run trains, you know, you're not, you're, you know back up and down uh, to, you know, move cars between the two yards. Tim, I was doing two to three videos a week, but I cut away back on rail fanning and haven't done any layout work in over two months. All right, so Sparky wants to see the fence again. Am I happy with it? I'm going to get you up real close. See how close we can get you. It's kind of hard to tell, but here we go. I mean, there's a lot going on. Let me move this building out of the way. Yeah, I'm actually pretty impressed. So, uh, it actually really stands out like back in this area here. You can't really see the wires on the screen, but you can see the post. Um, but yeah, I'm actually pretty impressed. I just wish they'd made them a little longer than, um, you know, the two feet, but it is what it is. Um, so, I've got a Another section to do back here and go all the way to the trees but I've got some scenery stuff that I need to do in order to do that so I think it turned out pretty good <laughs> Rusty says yeah get here on time next time yeah you can go back and actually watch me put it in um, it's pretty simple the you know you just got to have a small drill bit with the vice. So it's a one thirty seconds is a drill bit. So I Judy looked, I think container man meant to say I just looked twenty one hundred subs. That's awesome. That's awesome, Roy. So yep, yeah, yep, yeah, he meant just. Not Judy, but just. Okay. Oh. So Sparky says I have a couple of the woodland scenic fences that style waiting to do other videos. Yeah. So I have a total of four. So here's all four of them. And I only installed one. So the barbed wire. Um I just thought the barbed wire would look better for my era just to kind of separate the main line from an industry. So, you know, just separating that right away. That, that was just my thoughts on this one. Um, I plan on installing some more on the other side of the grade crossing once I do scenery in that area, too. I've got a lot of scenery to do in that in that spot, but. My goal is so that way I can fill this hole in where I'm at is to get all of this area right here done. So anyone in chat headed to Timonium in April? Uh, Timonium, I wish I could go. It's just a little too far away from me. But I know Ray Bobell will be there for sure. Um, Anthony Georgia Sunbelt will be there most likely. Uh, trying to think of some of the other guys that live in the area. Joe Raider lives up in that area as well. I'm pretty sure he would be there too. So, and I always say when it comes to train shows, even if you can't afford to buy a whole bunch or buy anything at all, just go to check out the layouts. To me, that is what I enjoy the most about train shows is going and actually looking at to see what other people have done because it gives you ideas. All right, so Sparky is saying foam board helps to install them. Plywood's a little bit harder. Absolutely. Yeah, you probably don't really need the vise in a drill if you're using uh, plywood. Plumber, Frank Neer is going. Okay. So Frank Neer, for those who don't know, that's a Steeler fan, uh, 820. Tell that to the NMRA. So what are we telling Lynn to the NMRA? I'm not sure. 
I actually participate in train shows around this area with my T-Track module. So I'm actually going to be taking, uh, so the Central Arkansas train show in August, it'll be the last weekend of August in Conway, Arkansas. I will be taking two layouts. I will be taking my LCC demo layout, which is just a locomotive running back and forth on the motor man. But it's got all the signals as it goes through, so you can see all the signaling changes and stuff. But the other layout that I plan on taking is the one that I just did for my Boy Scouts uh, for the railroading merit badge. I'm actually going to take and do a contest with it and award a prize uh, to the person who can switch the fastest time. And yes, I am going to limit the speed on the locomotive so they can't just go highball and try to switch these cars. They will be limited on speed, but it will be timed. So, um, and there will be an entry fee in that as well. And I did look up the laws for the state of Arkansas. As long as the contest is based just on skill and there's no luck in it at all, meaning that, you know, for, for example, like the, where the cars all start at and where it's got to deliver the cars, I have to give it the same way to every person. So that way there's no random draw where the cars are going. And as long as it's just based on skill, um, I can charge an entry fee and award prizes based off of that. So um, so that's something that I plan on doing. So I think that's going to be kind of interesting and fun to have at a train show is to have some type of contest. They The train show that I go to, they do contests based on like you know, how good you weather a model or if you scratch built something, they have, you know, layout, like contests on the layouts themselves and things like that. But they don't have anything like skill based on the operation side, like a switching puzzle. So. So Tim says, I participate in train shows by manning the NMRA booth with a race fan and other guys in my division. That's pretty cool. My division does not have a lot of people. I don't even think my division has 10 people. Sparky's having to miss Timonium this year. Seven hours is just too far plus hotel for three nights. Yeah, it's farther than that for me. It takes, it would be a two day drive there for me, two day drive back. Reading, Pennsylvania for May 18th, 19th and 20th for the YouTube meet and greet. So if you can go to Sparky's YouTube meet and greet for May 18th through the 20th, um definitely check it out he will be at the double tree so there you go all right guys well it's right at two hours so i am going to go ahead and sign off so guys i appreciate y'all coming in hanging out with me and let me show you how to install something that i've never installed before and my thoughts on it, it's not as hard as it seemed at first. And I guess it would it helped when uh, I looked at the instructions. And once I saw that, then I'm like, oh, well, that makes sense. So pretty simple, pretty, pretty simple. Um, just make sure that you got the drill bit you need and some really good glue. Aileen's. That's some good stuff, I'm going to tell you right now. So, and we got to uh, the Titchy Train Group. Yeah, Titchy Train Group. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Railroad Crossings put in. And one Woodland Scenics Just Plug Light. I will get that plugged in. So, yeah. Believe it or not, there's instructions. So, when you look at it, you have to open it up. Yeah, I couldn't believe there was instructions. So, so kudos to Woodland Scenics on that one for sure. Yeah, Weld Bond's good too. That's some good stuff as well. So, Tim Sam won't be at this year's, be at next year's through. That's close enough for me. Yet. Okay. All right, guys. Well, y'all be safe out there. I wish y'all a great rest of your weekend for your Saturday night, for your Sunday into Monday. I know a lot of people got spring break this upcoming week. So if you got spring break plans with your family, be safe out there. And I will catch y'all next time. So happy railroading.